Governor Ron DeSantis' likely entry into the Republican race for the presidency next week brings a renewed spotlight on what opponents called his Don't Say Gay law. It initially banned teacher, teaching Florida students about sexual orientation and gender identity through the third grade. It's been expanded last month through high school. Opponents call it dangerous and vague. It's led to book bans that have included authors such as Toni Morrison, Margaret Atwood, and Judy Bloom. It's part of an overall conservative push on education across the country. In the state of Florida, we're proud to stand for education, not indoctrination in our schools. The left-wing rioting and mayhem are the direct result of decades of left-wing indoctrination in our schools. The Democrats believe that parents shouldn't have a say in their kids' education. Parents want schools focused on reading, writing, and math not woke politics. The left is trying to hijack women's sports, and our schools are on the verge of becoming breeding grounds for liberal and progressive ideas. DeSantis' law also led to his ongoing fight with Disney. One of the people he appointed to a board that was supposed to provide more oversight of Disney was the co-founder of a group called Moms for Liberty, which has advocated for these classroom fights in school districts across America. Ellie Reeve has more on who they are. By exposing our children to adult concepts such as gender identity, we are asking them to carry a load that is much too heavy for them. Might I suggest instead of anal sex, perhaps we could go back to teaching cursive. This book is not appropriate and it is in your schools. Moms for Liberty is a parent activist group. It began in Florida in 2021 to protest public schools being closed for COVID and mask mandates. The group became a frequent and spicy presence at school board meetings. This is about more than masks for the record. But now there are more than 250 Moms for Liberty chapters nationwide, the group says. And it has gained major conservative allies and morphed into something else, a campaign against supposed indoctrination of children on race and sexuality. I have the right to say, I don't want my kids to learn this. I don't agree with this movement. And that's my right. So books should fall into that category as well. We wanted to understand what's driving these moms on a deeper level than some viral videos. So we met with the Moms for Liberty chapter in El Paso County, Colorado, where conservatives won majorities on three school boards in 2021. Leader Darcy Shanning let us watch a meeting where they talked about how to pressure those boards into making the policies they want. What school districts are most of you guys in? What Moms for Liberty has become most famous for is claiming school libraries contain books with pornographic content and for trying to get some books removed. Some of those books listed do talk about sex, but according to the Supreme Court's definition of obscenity, they're not porn. I've read a lot of criticism of your group. People say that this is kind of like a, a moral panic, that people have an irrational fear of what's going on. We're not looking to to ban books, we're not looking to burn books. We just need to get back to a system where parents know what their kids are learning and for the most part it's educational and not political. One of the books on your list is Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five. I mean, it's considered one of the classics of modern literature. Right, I read that in high school. Well, yeah. why would we, would you want that removed from no, a library? No, you don't, again, it's age appropriate. List. What might not be appropriate for a six-year-old is appropriate for a 15-year-old. Is someone assigning a first grader at the slaughterhouse file? Uh, no, but again, it's the right of the parents to know that it's there, that their children have access to something that they may not have access to at home. One of the big issues right now is pronouns. In March, Colorado's District 11 school board considered a proposal to prevent teachers from asking kids their pronouns, sparking protests. Teachers can no longer ask kids their pronouns. That's right, no more grooming kids with pronouns in D11. The school board has tabled the proposal. Why is asking a child their pronouns indoctrination? If you ask my children, who are seven and eight, what are your pronouns? They don't even know what that is. So when you ask that, you're planting the seed in their minds that they maybe should identify as another gender or that identifying as another gender is hip or cool. Hey, my teacher's asking me, so maybe this is what I should do. But I certainly never felt that way about my teachers. Like, I didn't learn I was heterosexual from my health teacher. It was from like watching 90s movies with Brad Pitt in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and but and I I think that's how most of us are. Is children can get on there and
We wanted to hear what some of the more liberal parents had to say. Some of them sat in on the meeting, and one passed me this note calling it a hate group. The next day, we met with those parents. For the record, have any of your kids ever come home and said, I am feeling peer pressure to be gay or trans? No. no. Naomi Lopez is a speech pathologist and works in a District 11 school. First of all, we're not going around saying, okay, you know, I want you to think about it. What gender are you? Yeah. Like, that's not happening. Period. They say it's happening. It's not. My personal beliefs, my personal viewpoint on the world does not come into the classroom. We are professionals with degrees in pedagogy. And she's also the mom of a transgender student. So, I'm sorry, can you ask me again? Because I'm getting pissed off. Um, <laughs> what, you want to talk about that first? Why does it make you emotional to talk about this stuff? So I get emotional when other people who don't have children, who are transgender or queer, place an assumption on it for the, for the sake of persecution based on their own belief. When you're putting all this curriculum everywhere and you're telling kids, hey, come, you could come talk to me behind your parents' back. I got your back. I mean, there's a clear move to bring more of that into our schools, and it's just not the school's place. So what I feel like you're strongly implying, and I would like to get your take on, because I don't want to attribute something that you don't think, but to me it sounds like you're saying there's some kind of high-level coordinated effort to make more children trans and gay. Yes. Yeah. Well, who's directing that? Teachers unions and um, our president and a lot of funding sources and teachers unions are also heavily backing the curriculum that we're bringing into schools. Why would they want more kids to be gay and trans? Because it breaks down the family unit, which breaks down traditional conservative values. It breaks down a lot of things in this country. It changes the way that people think. It changes the way that people um, handle politics. Of course, there's no evidence of a coordinated plot to make kids trans. When I hear those thoughts about like some sort of concerted effort to make people gay, does it sound like a conspiracy theory to you? Um, it's not a conspiracy theory that the state, whether you're talking about Colorado or the federal government, is taking a stronger and stronger hand in public education, in raising our kids. So do I think that for some reason, people want everyone to be gay. That's a mischaracterization of what I think. I think that people will use, you know, the people that want to erode away at parental rights, the left, the teachers unions, they'll use LGBTQ or whatever may be the case at the time. Those are just tools to erode away at parental rights. The last D11 meeting of the school year was mostly about student awards and performances. The board seemed to anticipate the few Moms for Liberty members in the crowd. As we reflect over the last year, removing rogue woke clubs, teachers, woke teachers, and woke counselors from D11 is a must. And a couple of students push back. If you remove teachers' ability to ask for pronouns, you will remove the ability for safe spaces to exist, taking away the safety of your students. I want to recognize our students and the support staff that are supporting our students out there. My child thinks it's ludicrous that it's such a big deal because to them it's just normal. To their friends, they don't care how my child identifies. They love them for who they are. And Ellie Reeve joins me now. Is it, um, is it clear to you which side of this debate has the most support or momentum in, you know, in, in that school district, for instance? Well, to be clear, Shaning's kids have never gone to public school. She says she doesn't want them Wait to Wait a minute, her kids don't go to public school? No, they okay. have never been. She hopes maybe by high school, the schools will be good enough for her kids. Um, the other liberals we talk to, the liberal parents whose kids do go to that school, they say it's not the majority opinion. So, for example, one parent complained about five books, and that meant that the district had to create committees to determine whether those books were obscene or they could stay. And in the end, all five stayed, but one parent who served on that committee said it was just a huge waste of time and resources. Uh, Ellery, thank you. Really fascinating report.